Let us start chapter 7, uh, Flexible Pavement Design by ASTRO 93. So the name of the metro, uh, method ASTRO 93, uh, it is telling that um, this method is very old. Uh, this method was developed in early 60s and finally uh, implemented in 1993. Nowadays, I do not know whether any design agency uses this method. But still though we need to learn this method mm, there are several reasons behind that the first reason mm, can be uh, uh, if you learn this method then you will see the improvement uh, when you will learn the new method uh, but but this is not a important reason uh, other reason is that uh, pavements that were built five ten years uh, ago uh, those pavements were built based on this method so when you will work with those pavement or rebuild those pavement or redesign uh, those pavement you may need to know that method uh, to see how uh, the pavement was at that time and then other uh, reason uh, maybe um, still though some local pavements or some non-importance pavement may be uh, designed based on this method so uh, this method may be still useful uh, if you uh, work in this industry so let us see uh, what this method is this method is all about um, this equation you can see the, this equation so it's all about this equation so in this equation the left side is our demand uh, w18 that means simply the total sl the total number of equivalent single axle load uh, maybe 2 million, 10 million, 15 million, whatever it is. And right side is our capacity, capacity of the pavement. This equation looks very complicated but very simple. I am explaining one by one. This portion, the, this portion is reliability. S0 is the standard deviation uh, of the performance that was observed in the uh, ASH road test uh, in Illinois. And ZR is the standard uh, uh, normal divide. Normal divide, uh, it is n nothing to understand. It's simply uh, read a value from the table based on the reliability. Say if you are designing the pavement for 90% reliability, you have to take uh, the normal divide for 90% reliability. Now, I will explain it again a bit um, uh, more detail. So, uh, if you have confusion it will be clear after some times then this is log sn sn is the structural number that is the output from this uh, equation in this equation everything is input only output is sn you need to calculate sn and then here uh, pt pt means terminal serviceability what is this uh, it means the condition of the pavement uh, based on the scale from 0 to 5 0 means actually the pavement is totally destroyed and 5 means so far is smooth pavement. Uh, you can see here we used 4.2 that means when we build a new pavement we are telling that the serviceability of the pavement is 4.2 out of 5. Uh, the, reason, uh, the reason that we did not use 5 is that we cannot build super smooth pavement or super smooth pavement is not good for riding a car uh, we need some resistance so we need some friction uh, to avoid the skid resistance so when we build a pavement that is 4.2 now what is 1.5 1.5 means very low number the pavement is failed like pavement failed it cannot be used anymore so in that scale what is your terminal serviceability so you can say my terminal serviceability is 1.5. 1.5 means a pavement is totally destroyed, not totally destroyed. Totally destroyed means zero. So 1.5 means the pavement is there, but it is impossible to drive on it. Uh, to give you some idea, for interested pavement, typically 2.5 is a good number. For uh, highway, type, highway, highway type pavement, uh, this value can be 2. For local loads, 1.8. Uh, so this is that value. Then again, SN is the output and MR. MR is the resilient modulus of the soil or underneath the layer. 
so we will insert the uh, resident modulus of soil our desired terminal serviceability that means at what value we want our pavement to be called fail and then some reliability uh, reliability factor and this standard deviation standard deviation is pretty known is 0.35 uh, yes I, I wrote somewhere here and this is the total ECL the traffic level so use this equation find SN that is the design output from SN we can calculate uh, the thickness of different layers uh, how I will show you later of this chapter okay now we uh, we will uh, you can see that this equation is very complicated but there is a shortcut what is that shortcut come here next page so this nomogram this nomogram will help us a lot what is this nomogram if I zoom in you can see so th this nomogram will just solve that equation that equation is very complicated to solve using calculator but if we use this nomogram very simple how okay start from here reliability what is your reliability of the pavement uh, mostly we design pavement based on 90 percent reliability or here it is 98 percent whatever your reliability is uh, and i know that uh, hopefully you know what is uh, reliability uh, that is a statistics term uh, i'm not explaining or i'm not taking time to discuss that but very briefly reliability means uh, what is the reliability of your data like uh, if we use 90% um, reliability that means 90% uh, of, of your data may be true the 10% may be wrong okay so, um, so here it is 90 whatever 90 or 90 whatever then first use this value whatever is given or whatever your is your target then is standard deviation is commonly 0 0.35 only only 0.35 so uh, if it is 98 and connect this line up to this then okay then come here what is your estimated total ECL so if your ECL is say 50 million then it is here 10 million here 5 million here 1 million here so locate your number once you locate it then connect your this point and that point and go to up to this then come here what is your resilient modulus of the soil so look at that point and then connect this and that then go straight to here then here to horizontally come to this point this is your delta psi delta psi means 4.2 minus your serviceability uh, that means the upper portion the upper portion of this road 4.2 minus uh, minus pt uh, or that is also called delta psi okay you can see here delta psi is 4.2 minus pt okay so go to that equation sorry go to that uh, chart now once you look at that point then go down whatever the value is that is the structural number so hopefully you you, you learn how to use this nomogram or how to use that equation I do not uh, recommend you to, to use the equation because it is very complicated. You can use this nomogram. Now, once you find the SN, you can design your pavement. What, what, what will be the thickness of the different layers? You can find it. Okay, we will see that at the last of this chapter. So, now we will go one by one. First is W18. What is W18? Simply, it is the total SL whatever you learn in chapter 6 that is first uh, calculate two-way initial traffic then uh, forecast it based on the growth factor then calculate the equivalent single equivalent axial load factor uh, then convert into a cell then distribute it or oh, you do not need to distribute it uh, if you are um, oh, uh, no no um, you you need to actually distribute it based on your uh, design length so you can see, you learn that also you need to apply distribution factor and length length factor whatever you learn in chapter 6 to calculate e cell is same thing so w18 is nothing but e cell okay next is e structural number what is that e structural number is just a number but this number will tell the capacity of the entire pavement oh, 
So, or simply the capacity of the entire pavement is called a structural number. Now, how do we calculate it? See, Sn is A1, D1, A2, D2, M2 plus A2, A3, D3, M3. What is that? A1 means layer coefficient of top layer, the number on layer. And D1 means depth of that layer. So, this one is um, D1 means asphalt layer depth. A1 means the coefficient. Now, what is coefficient? The coefficient is a value from 0 to 1 in the scale of 0 to 1. What is the modulus inside this scale? So, 0 means simply water. Uh, water or water type. And 1 means is full rigid, maybe mild steel. But we are talking about flexible pavement. There is no mild steel or steel here. It is in that scale. In that scale where your asphalt is. Typically, asphalt is 0 0.4, 0 0.44 like this. And similarly here, base layer. A2 means a layer coefficient of base layer. And D2 means depth of the base layer. M2 means the drainage capacity of base layer. If drainage capacity is good, we can consider this one. Then similarly, this is for sub-base. Okay, so hopefully you, you, you will learn it. Now, this calc um, whatever SN we, we get from the nomograph, then we make it equal. And then based on different combination of this, we select D1, D2, D3. We'll know be better in the last of the chapter. Okay, now we will see how to, uh, oh, before going there, let, uh, some, of some general values of the layer coefficient. So, ASM is typically 0.44, uh, crust stone base is 0.14, stabilized base. Stabilized base means if you mix some cement, lime inside the base material, it will be 0.3 to 0.4, uh, sub base is 0.11. So, this is the typical values. Now, how to find a layer coefficient for asphalt layer? So, asphalt layer, we can find the layer coefficient using our modulus, the modulus, the elastic modulus of the asphalt uh, at 68 degrees Celsius. So, at this temperature, we need to determine the modulus of the asphalt concrete, then come to this table, say if it is 200,000, uh, then come here, go up and go left, is point roughly 0.3. If your modulus is 400,000 PSI, then come here, go top, then go left, 0.4243, whatever. So in this way, we can find the layer coefficient for as per layer. Now, how to find layer coefficient for base layer? So layer coefficient for, uh, for base layer, we can find many different ways. One is either find the modulus or find the Texas triaxial test, find the number, or find the R value or find the California bearing ratio, whatever you do. So whatever you do, then say you, you did R value and you found R value is 60. Then come here, R value is 60, go left. Go left roughly 0 0.085 something. Say if you are California, if you did California bearing ratio and it is say 80, then come here go to 80 roughly here, then coefficient is roughly 0.13 something. So whatever test you do, you can find it. There's also other way to find the layer coefficient of base layer. How? Uh, you can see here there is some equation. Okay, some equation is this equation. So A2, A2 is 0.249 uh, log E2 minus this. How to find E2? E2 find E2 is K1 third to the power K2. What is K1? Uh, K, K1 uh, K2. See, very simple. You do not need to do anything. Just the table is given here. Table is uh, given here. So, okay. Okay. So, yes. You can see how to find uh, K1, K2, based on your moisture condition, if it is dry, K1 ranges between this, you can take average number or whatever number, then K2 ranges this, if your soil is wet, then this, and K2 is this. How to find theta? Theta is based on asphalt thickness. Say if your asphalt thickness is 4 to 6 inch and soil modulus is say 7,500, then your theta is 10. So you can read K1, K2, and theta from this table, insert it there, then you can find 
uh, a2 so that is another way to find a2 so this is similar for subbase or if i go down uh, for uh, for sub you can see this example uh, for practice uh, for subbase similar approach you can use this equation you can use this equation or you can use the chart this chart yes based on your soil um, sub base modulus was texas to excel test or r value test or cbr test then you can find a3 or you can use the above equation so hopefully you learn how to find layer coefficient for different layers and now we will go Oh, there is another example drainage coefficient that means m2 m3 so drainage coefficient is based on this table so based based on uh, this table say your sub base layer it, the quality of drainage is say good what does good means good means water water will remove within one day and we, we call it good then percentage of the time the structure is exposed to moisture level that means if it is not in the rainy zone uh, the pavement may be exposed to rain maybe 10 percent of the time but 10 percent is very huge in oregon maybe 30 percent 20 percent in dry area like new mexico arizona maybe one percent so that is the percentage of the time your pavement will be exposed to water so based on your quality and based on the time you can choose your number m to m3 whatever so this is the this is how you can take um, the number of uh, sorry the value of m2 or m3 now other value is mr how to calculate mr so uh, simply you can take a sample take it to the laboratory and determine the modulus it's very simple but it is not so simple because you know that the modulus of soil depends on the moisture condition if moisture is high modulus is less then how to find a single value in that equation at the beginning the equation i showed you big equation it uses a single value but the modulus of soil changes with season so what how to do what to do first we divide the season in a different number say 12 months or you can say four uh, uh, summer winter uh, or winter sorry spring summer fall winter four seasons you can divide it or you can divide by 12 months or you can divide into 52 52 weeks and based on that for uh, every times their moisture in the soil will change based on that moisture calculate modulus but if you do 52 is huge so 12 is a good number every month one so every month in that region what is the moisture moisture level based on that moisture level find the modulus okay so first we divide the um, year into different numbers 12 months or uh, four season or three season or two season or 52 weeks whatever you like then determine the soil modulus for that different season then to calculate a relative damage Relative damage means if your modulus is high, the damage in the pavement for particular load will be low. So th that is called relative damage. So it is an empirical uh, empirical number. So empirical number, sorry, empirical equation. Uh, empirical equation. So use, using this equation, determine relative damage for different uh, periods. Or different months whatever your uh, uh, division is then sum up if you sum up you'll get the damage per entire uh, year then divide by in 12 no actually not 12 divide by the number if you divide by the number you will get the average damage you'll get the average damage once you get the average damage average relative damage then use that equation again to back calculate the mr that is how we calculate uh, the value of uh, mr okay so there is an example here to understand better i know that it looks very it looks very um, complicated but very simple 
say here we divided the year into 12 months every month we determine the most uh, we collected so, uh, sample and determine the soil modulus so these are our modulus then we'll calculate what is the average modulus so average modulus is not the average of this, this, this. it should be based on the average damage in the pavement so what we'll do for every month we will calculate so for every month we will calculate the relative damage say relative damage in january this february this march this we calculated after calculation i don't know why my cursor is not working yes now it is working okay so you can see defined months we calculated relative damage after calculating we summed up all then we divided by 12 and got the average value once we got the average value we use the average value here and calculated our modulus so that is the effective road bed soil modulus it is the average of all 12 months based on the uh, damage so this is how to find uh, effective road bed soil modulus other term is terminal serviceability so yeah, i already discussed it based on the scale of 0 to 5 we gave a number uh, that if my payment decreases to this we will assume it is fail okay so how that number was uh, developed that if it is 1.5 it is fail based on this assumption that if 85 percent people say the road is unacceptable that means that condition is true if 55 percent people says the road is unacceptable that means that is 2.5 so based on this uh, like uh, logic it's not exactly nobody can tell exactly pavement fail somebody will say fail somebody will say no so based on this assumption and i told you it is a common uh, like common or general value for interested 2.5 is a good number to assume terminal serviceability for major local load 2 for normal non-important or very residential load maybe 1.8 but again it is based on the uh, demand of the public uh, now reliability for reliability what should be our reliability as to give us some guidelines if it is interested in urban area use 85 percent to 99.9 .9. if it is local say for urban area 50 to 80 in rural area 50 to 80 also that is some guidelines you may not follow this no problem then what how to calculate the normal divide at the beginning i told you uh, you need to know this what is that is simply table if your reliability is 90 percent then your ZR is 1.282. We design pavement mostly for 90% reliability. So it's better to memorize this value. Or sometimes 90, uh, mostly 90%. If it's 98%, 2.054. So now you know what is normal divide. Is It is based on the normal distribution uh, that you saw it in your uh, statistics class. Okay, so uh, we discussed the initial um, design equation or design nomograph and I discuss every term very briefly. You can read the book um, to learn more. Yeah, I'm going very fast because if my video length is so big, nobody will watch it. So I'm going slow. Now, after learning all this, this is our final learning selection of layer, layer thickness how will we uh, select our or how will we design the pavement finally so this section is very important okay in fact we discuss it but now we will apply our knowledge um, before starting this table will show you what is the minimum thickness possible so after designing if you see that your as per thickness is uh, say for this case when your ECL is two to seven million you found that your as per thickness is 2 inch but you cannot be it you cannot use less than 3.5 inch that is the as to recommendation based on this method 
so whenever after your design you should check it with this table that it cannot be less than that okay so this this figure will explain the method so what we will do at the beginning at the beginning uh, we will assume that our pavement will have only one layer only this layer not this layer we will neglect this at the beginning we will assume our pavement will have only one layer then we will and the modulus of this will be our mr again i am repeating because it is important so at the beginning we are assuming that this is our soil this is our soil and it is infinity then this is our mr and then we will calculate our sn how you will calculate sn based on the initial equation the first equation i showed big equation or you can use the nomogram then if you use this is your mr the mr here is your mr and if you find sn then your sn on one means like first layer so your sn one will be equals a1 d1 so if you know the a1 of this layer you can find d1 so that is the way to find d1 then choose a round number once you find d1 then assume the modulus of this is your mr then calculate or find sn2 sn2 will be a1 d1 plus a2 u d2 m2 so you know a1 d1 for this now you know a2 m2 then you can calculate d2 here then take a round number then come here this is your mr calculate sn3 then sn3 will be a1 d1 a2 m2 d2 a3 m3 d3 you know this one you know this one you know a3 d uh, m3 for this then you can calculate d3 so this way you can calculate different layer thickness one by one so i explain this here by step by step so step number one assume your e2 that means the modulus of layer 2 as your mr then use the equation or the nomogram and calculate sn1 then your d1 will be sn1 divided by a1 then whatever you will get take a round number this bigger means uh, it cannot be less than the required you can take a higher number say you got 6.1 d1 then use 6.5 or 7 is to be a round number so it, it, it the your book said that uh, d, uh, round d1 to nearest point 0.5 inch yes as per concrete typically 6 inch 6.5 this way then step number 2 use e3 as your mr then calculate sn2 then use this equation calculate d2 because you are calculating this you know this part now you know this material properties then calculate d2 so this way you can calculate one by one so hopefully you understood if you did not understand there is an example here so this is the example given yes my uh, this book actually you know that i wrote this book this book has so many example everything is clear uh, so this is an example here here you know the modulus of surface layer and a1 layer coefficient what is d1 d2 d3 so many other values are given whatever you need so what to do at the beginning assume this is your mr find sn1 once you find sn1 you can calculate d1 then take a round number then next step use this is your mr calculate sn2 then calculate d2 third step this is your mr calculate sn3 based on that calculate d3 and then choose round number so i did the same thing here at the beginning e2 is mr then use the nomograph and find sn i found sn on 3 then sn1 equal a1 d1 uh, and sn1 you calculated from your chart 3 
then solve it, you will get D1 7.1 per round off to 7.5. Now this should be more than the minimum value. So always check with the table. Which table? I am going again this table. So always check that your number is greater than this. Yes, here the maximum is like 4. I got 7. So way higher than that. Okay, so this way you can continue yes, a step number 2, step number 3. So in step number 2, two I assume E3 as MR and then calculated D2 4.72 round up to nearest hand number. And then step number 3. So this way you can finish it. So I think hopefully you learned it. There is no reason that uh, you cannot understand this one. Very simple. And this is the end of this chapter. Uh, and then finally practice this uh, AFE exam type question. It's very simple, very easy. Mm, in your AFE exam, you might expect this kind of question. Okay. And then finally practice problem. So hopefully you understood this chapter is a very basic chapter, very easy chapter. And again, this is a old method. Nowadays, we do not use it uh, unless for minor or non-important road. But still, that we need to learn it uh, for different reason, uh, as I uh, explained at the beginning. So in our next video, uh, we will go to our next chapter. Uh, thank you.